Where we're going next is where I made my first million dollars. It's Bitcoin, baby. And here's the deal. It also happened to be one of my best friends in the whole world. So we're gonna do for my best friend and my first million. Most of you motherfuckers struggle to make money while you're awake. I make money the entire time I fucking sleep. You should have took that car because it's got battery in it. I got three Teslas on a cold motherfucking day in Nebraska and they're all fucking battery. We're actually going to where my first major mine was. Like I started off mining small. So the guy named Comer, who actually was in prison and he was a drug dealer, and he actually made a shit ton of money while he was in prison because he had done a Bitcoin exchange for drugs. While he was in prison, it went from like $200 to $2,000. And he's sitting in the clink and he's like, holy shit, how do I get this without doing drug deals? If I had a Bitcoin for every time people told me that Bitcoin was dead and over, I mean, people would say Bitcoin crashed and it was at $10,000. I'm like, Get the fuck out of here, $10,000. I mean, I was buying it at $2,700 and mining it at $2,700, and you told me it crashed? I, I don't even understand what people are fucking talking about. So essentially, he was researching it, figured out mining. He rents the spot at L Street, which is my first laundromat. So I walk in, I go, what the fuck is it you're doing, man? You can't be cutting holes in here without my permission. And he goes, oh, I'm building a data center. I go, listen, motherfucker, you could have said that to a lot of people, but I said, I build every fucking data center, Google, Facebook, all of them. I said, this ain't no data center. Then he tells me, he goes, it's a Bitcoin mine. And I'm like, what the fuck is a Bitcoin mine? Hey, buddy. Not much. Joe Brenner is one of the largest electrical contractors in the city of Omaha. I worked at General Electric as an account manager. He was one of my top accounts, and we actually became really close friends during the course of doing business together and lots of projects together. He's like, how'd you make your first million? I said, fucking Bitcoin. He goes, really? I go, really? Second and the third. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. Don't talk about all the millions you made because you probably didn't pay taxes on it. Oh, you did. You gotta edit that out. Good luck finding it. <laughs> so the first thing you want to see is a switchboard because people have no idea. When you are a Bitcoin miner, you are basically Visa or MasterCard. You have these blocks. They're released every 12 minutes. When we were doing it at the time, it was 25 Bitcoin per block. So if your miner solved the equation when that block was released, you were awarded 25 Bitcoin. So this right here is actually a 2,500 amp switchboard. And we were actually configuring this because I worked at G at the time. So instead of doing a main, a bunch of subs, we can get away with a six disconnect rule. So we actually made this the most economical way we could possibly make it with 2,500 amps. So this 2,500 amps is being pushed into all these panels and these are completely full of breakers. So one time, me and two other guys in the city of Omaha, we were something like 30% of the entire hash rate for North America, but it got to be where we were a fraction. We became 1% and then less. So what we did is we joined a pool, and the way a pool works is you're working in collaboration with a ton of people. And Hefe designed all this. There's a full one. They're, yeah, they're all, well, they're all full. Well, that one. So, one megawatt of power. Which, they, you guys are gonna have a clue, but it's a shit time. Like, our power bill was $30,000 a month. The highest I've had is $70,000 a month. Hi, yeah, he kept going big when I stopped. <laughs> so if I have 200 miners working, and that day we don't get a block, we get zero Bitcoin. The next day we don't get a block, we get zero Bitcoin. You join a pool, and you have like, let's say that there's 100 terahash and you're providing 20, that means you get 20% of whatever the pool collects minus like a 5% fee. You get Bitcoin every single day, but you don't get like a full block. You get whatever your hash rate percentage was to the pool. Like I said, when people say they fucking Bitcoin mine, they don't fucking Bitcoin mine. So you're gonna go in here and it's gonna be loud and it's gonna suck. So you come in here. Currently, I have no idea what a miner costs because the technology is just, you know, continuing to stack on each other. When we were doing it, S9 was the best miner you could get. We got them out of, from Bitmain out of China. So we would literally wire a quarter of a million dollars to China. And I don't know what people understand, like China doesn't work like America. So you actually have to pay for your product and then they build it. Like where in America, you would receive your product and then you would pay for it, China's the reverse. And it actually was getting so bad that if you actually mentioned Bitcoin to a bank, they wouldn't even do the wire. So you had to say like you were buying computers. I mean, you didn't want to be lying to the bank, but you also didn't want to be 100% transparent. So you're like, I'm sending this quarter of a million dollars to China and re in return, I'm getting supercomputers sent to me. So this side is where the air comes in. 
So you have this big filter system. And we want to keep the laser shit out. But you can see, it's all coming in here. It's straight air from outside. And right now it's seven degrees out and you can't tell it in here. And we have to use a lift because you constantly have them going in and out. And this is actually not completely full. It used to be, it was like a wall. Like it was like, and he calls me one day and he says, this thing started on fire, which should never, ever, ever. It's liquid and metal, and it started on fucking fire. Look at this fucking mic. Where's the magnet mic, the good mic? When we started doing this, it was actually quite easy to get the S9, and you could order them readily whenever. But then it became so crazy popular as Bitcoin started going to 2,900, 10,000, and even 20,000, that it got to be where we'd be get, getting up at three in the morning when Bitmain was releasing a new batch of miners. And sometimes we would have three different people trying to buy as many as we could and we still wouldn't be able to get any because the bit main server would be actually crashing because of the high demand. This is what we started on right here. We just built this rack and we put it in that room over there. And this is what we started. This is, we should put this in the museum. <laughs> With Bitcoin, I actually truly believe in Bitcoin. I still believe in Bitcoin. Right now, I know it's slow, but you gotta think, I mined a lot of Bitcoin when it was under 2,700 or $3,000. I was a Bitcoin millionaire, then I wasn't a Bitcoin millionaire, then I was a Bitcoin three millionaire. It was like all over the place. You had to have the stomach to write it out. I don't sell Bitcoin. I used to sell Bitcoin just to cover whatever my power expense was. And I also sold enough Bitcoin to recoup all the costs that I, that I spent on miners. Like right here, you can see like it's a shipping container. And it's all vented on the side and then it exhausts. But they're all back here. You can hear they're running. They're all full, he says. When we were doing it, S9 was the most efficient machine and now it's like a relic. I mean, now the efficiency is a lot better. The hash rate's a lot higher. But when we got the S9, it was like crazy because the hash rate was only like three tera hash. And this went to 12 or 15 and people were like, holy shit. Yeah. Someone would buy a $2,000 S9 and they could sell it for 4,000 because these things were paying for themselves in two months. So, I mean, an ROI of a year is fantastic. An ROI of two months, fucking insane. It just doesn't happen. In the height of it, I remember Bitcoin hit $20,000. And at that point, a lot, a lot of people were mining. So we were doing about a half of Bitcoin a day. So if you take the power cost, minus $1,000 plus a Bitcoin a day at 10,000 minus, we were making like $9,000 a day, which wasn't even real, right? I mean, it's still, it just felt weird. It wasn't, you did the best part, you don't, you did the work, you did, he did have to do a lot of work because he built this. And I kind of fucked around a little bit, but not really, I didn't be build it. You build it once and it was just like free money. Essentially right now, all the Bitcoin I have is 100% free. Like I, I don't owe any money on any equipment, I don't owe any power bills. So I'm playing with the house's money. So even if Bitcoin goes to zero, I could give a shit. And like I said, he already had money, so it wasn't as special for him, but like I didn't have money. I didn't have as much. Well, see, the thing is, like, I still have Bitcoin. I haven't sold it, so and I, ha I won't sell it. So, I mean, I've probably been as high as $4 million, and right now I'm probably, I don't even know what I have, a million and a half, maybe? You probably don't want to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's got more. <laughs> <laughs> I truly believe that someday Bitcoin will be a million dollars a coin. I don't know if it's going to be five years, 10 years, 20 years, but it's going to happen. There's a finite amount of it. It's a digital currency. And the beauty of Bitcoin is, like, there's no government that controls Bitcoin. The laundromat was doing well, but I became a millionaire because of this. And then I became not a millionaire, then I became a millionaire because Bitcoin does this. <laughs> and that, that's the beauty of it. It's actually an autonomous money that's traded every single hour of every single day, and you can trade it for any currency in the world. I can get on a plane with nothing except for 12 words in my brain. I can land anywhere on this planet. And using those 12 words, I can convert that Bitcoin into the currency of the place that I'm in. We be fly, fly like dust. You know what the fuck you listening? We're gonna fuck the feeling that you're giving me. Oh, pretty, pretty, please like my comments and subscribe. And please don't say anything bad because I'm so fucking sensitive. You're gonna hurt my fucking feelings. So please, only nice, pretty comments. Girl, you should know.